Hi, uh, thank you for joining us today on today's Creature Feature at Assiniboine Park Zoo. I'm CJ Brighter. I'm one of the research conservation specialists here at the zoo. And with me, we have... Hi, I'm Sarah McInbach-Hirsch. I'm an animal care professional here at the zoo and also a diver, and I get to work with these lovely bears every day. So today, today we're going to be talking a little bit about conservation and research. Did you actually know that there's a dedicated team here at the zoo that concentrates solely on conservation and research of wildlife? Uh, today we are going to be focusing on polar bears and lucky us, we get a great view right now. So just because the zoo is closed doesn't mean research stops. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about what research is going on behind the scenes. Um, but first, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about polar bears. Uh, so polar bears are actually listed as threatened in Manitoba. They are, um, there's less than 900 individuals left in the Western Hudson Bay population, which is the subpopulation that's found in Manitoba. And one of their biggest threats is actually um, climate change and the sea, sea ice loss. So what um, polar bears require sea ice as their main habitat. They use it to find seals, which they eat. Uh, they use it to find their mates, and they also um, sometimes give birth in dens on the sea ice. So if their habitat is shrinking due to climate change, that's a big problem because that's their habitat that they're missing. So their numbers are declining in the Western Hudson Bay population. Uh, but not everywhere, luckily. Uh, so today I wanted to tell you about our polar bears that we have here. At the zoo we have currently nine polar bears that we care for, and all of them are rescues from northern Manitoba. So CJ, can you tell us a little bit about our hair dye study that's happening? We posted a video about this um, recently on our Facebook page, so everybody can go back and watch that for a little bit more detail. But we can see on this bear right here a bit of a black spot on his shoulder. So you can tell us what that means and what you guys are doing in the conservation department with our bears. Yeah, so we have been participating in a study for the last uh, few months to get more information about hair growth rate in polar bears. So in the wild, researchers study polar bears and they will take samples of their fur to learn a lot about that animal. It tells them what they've been eating, uh, the types of hormones that they're releasing. But what we don't really know is how long it takes for that hair to actually grow and give us that glimpse into their lives. So. Here at the zoo, we've been working with the animal care team to train one of the bears. The bear that Lindsay just showed you is York. And in the background, there's Willow, who has a, also a patch on her right shoulder. Uh, we've been training the animals to present a, a part of their body, which we can then dye with normal human hair dye. And then over time, we will be plucking hairs from that dye patch. And as, as time goes on, we'll see how that hair is growing and how fast it's growing. So bears in a zoo offer us a really unique opportunity to learn about um, things that we might not be able to learn about on, in wild animals. Awesome. We have some great questions here that we want to um, start answering. My favorite one that I'll answer for you guys, this must not be coming from somebody in Winnipeg. Somebody is asking if this is real snow. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, we got a big dumping, so the polar bears are enjoying that. Um, but Sarah, can you answer some questions about the bears? Um, we have a question here from Roberta asking, how much do they eat every day? So it depends on the season and the bear. Um, but typically at this time of year we're seeing them a lot more hungry um, in the winter months so they can eat as much as storm for example our largest and oldest polar bear can eat as much as 30 pounds of food in one day and in fact in one sitting so bears are often gorge feeders so them eating all of that daily diet in one sitting is not an issue for them in the summer months uh, our Churchill bears here typically eat a lot less, so it might be as low as maybe seven or eight pounds of food in a day. 
Great. We have some questions about um, where these guys sleep. Maybe we can talk about both here at the zoo and in the wild. Uh, here at the zoo, they like to sleep in sometimes their own beds that they make. So all around the fields, we find little dug little divots that they kind of curl up in in the snow or the mud. But we also have a number of dens for them. So if you visit the zoo and you come to the Tundra Grill, our restaurant, for example, you can see a den from the windows there. That is a favorite spot of specifically Storm, the polar bear. So he often likes to sleep in there in the afternoons. But throughout the exhibits, we have a couple more dens that they can use. Uh, and can you tell us how old the bears in our zoo are? Well, we have nine bears, and they range from Storm being the oldest, who is nine years old, and the youngest, um, well, the two youngest are Willow and Baffin, and they're three. Uh, and how much do these guys weigh? Uh, again, the uh, varying. So males are often a lot more than females in weight. Um, I believe Storm is around 850 right now, 850 pounds. And uh, the female, so Willow right now and Star are actually around 450 pounds. But a female polar bear might between, be between five and 600 um, when they're fully grown. And um, yeah, males can be more than double that even. Great. Um, we're gonna go back to CJ to tell us about another really cool project that the conservation research team has going on here with our polar bears. Yeah, so we've been involved in several studies where we're actually using um, poop uh, for lack of a better term, um, <laughs> to learn about these animals. So poop can actually tell us a lot, just like hair, about what animals have been eating. But we've been using them, those samples here to tell us more about their hormones. So just like people, polar bears release hormones at different levels, at different life stages. Um, so we're learning from these hormones kind of what behaviors might be linked to elevated levels of certain hormones or um, potentially if they're ready to breed uh, throughout the year. So it's really interesting stuff that we can learn from it. But one of the, the problems that we have here is that we actually need to know whose poop is whose. And when we have nine bears and here we have uh, seven, how many are in one group right now? There's six or, six or one big two. Group right yeah. yeah, so when they're uh, in the same habitat together, it can be hard to identify whose poop is whose. So the way we get around that is actually feeding the polar bears glitter. And I have a, just a sample of what that looks like. So it's normal craft glitter. Um, and so we put it in a meatball that we feed to the bears on a daily basis. And then when the animal care staff are cleaning up the fields, uh, we look for patties on the, on the land and see if there's glitter in them. And so each bear has their own color, so it, say this is not real poop, just to let you guys know, I wouldn't be handling it without gloves. Um, but say we found a sample like this, I don't know if you can see it well uh, on the field, but it has purple um, glitter in there. So if we saw that, we would know that it's Aurora's poop or green is associated with storm. So um, once we have those samples, we can store them in the freezer and then um, put them through analysis at a later date. And then the information that we can gather from that, um, there, there's a lot of different things that we can learn from that type of information. It's pretty cool. Poop is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to let you know, CJ, you're getting lots of comments on your polar bear sweater. Oh, thank lots you. Lots of compliments. <laughs> Just for this. <laughs> We're going to ask her a few more questions now. Um, we have a question here from Cheryl asking, uh, does the glitter hurt them in any way? Is there any kind of negative side effect to the glitter that we feed them? No, we uh, have no evidence that it actually remains in their gut for any amount of time. It just passes through like any food. We have been looking to move towards um, better, more sustainable glitter options. Right now we've been using uh, the plastic-based glitter, but we don't want to be polluting our environment with little pieces of plastic, so we've found a plant-based glitter that we're moving towards using. Um, yeah, so it, it, you can actually find glitter on the web that people can ingest. <laughs> and it's a, a neat little science experiment you can try at home. <laughs> we have a few questions asking, do the polar bears here get along with each other? They do, actually. Um, it's really special that we can have 
uh, such a large group of polar bears together. Um, that's not to say that we don't ever see aggression, but what happens is we just make sure that we set our bears up to succeed. So for example, if you're gonna be feeding them their daily diet, uh, you're gonna probably have them on their own, in their own zone where they can feel safe and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, long story short, we are very fortunate to have a group of bears that has a lot of fun together. Uh, we have a lot of questions about what all of the polar bears' names are and which ones these are specifically. <laughs> Okay, so specifically I can tell you this bear on the right is Casca. She's five years old, one of our females. Behind her digging is Aurora, another five-year-old female. Uh, and then to the left here, Mr. Hair Dye is York, who is five years old. Actually, sorry, I said Casca and Aurora were five. I think I should have said that they were seven. seven. I have to count backwards yeah, for they're seven. Four. <laughs> they are seven, yes. Yeah. So sorry, York is five. And right up at the top now is Willow, who's one of the youngest ones. She's three. That's correct, yeah. And she also has a bit of a dye patch, but it's a little more faded than York's these days. And can you just give the names of any of the bears that we're not seeing in here right now? Okay, so we also have Nanook and Baffin. Those are two boys. Uh, Nanook is four, Baffin is three. Uh, Siku is also four, I believe. He's in the pool right now. Storm is our oldest, who's nine. And Star, one of our females, is six. I think that's everybody. Yeah. Great. Uh, and some questions about what they eat and what are some of the treats that we were seeing thrown to them? So I personally find it so funny and interesting, but these bears love their produce. So they get actually things like lettuce, apple, carrot, yam, grapes, things like that every day as just an extra treat. They don't have a lot of caloric value for them. Obviously, they're not looking, you know, picking apples in the wild or, or going to, into lettuce gardens or anything like that, but um, they are opportunistic and apparently for them it is just a fun treat. So that's what you're seeing kind of get thrown around here. There's also a little bit of cat chow, which is just also a treat, but their daily diet consists of, they have ground meat, a variety of different uh, fish species, anything from salmon, tulipy, mackerel, herring, capelin, those kinds of things and they also get a chow-based diet that's formulated specially for them. Uh, we have some questions about um, how long they can stay underwater and how they use the water and the ice to hunt. So maybe CJ, you can tell us a little bit about, about sea ice and how polar bears do use sea ice. Yeah, so um, Sarah talked about what the polar bears eat here, but in the wild, their main prey is the ring seal but they will eat other species of seal like the bearded seal and the harbor seal. Um, and then if there's an animal like a whale that washes ashore, they'll definitely um, dine on a big carcass of different kinds of whale species. Um, so they are incredible hunters and like I said before, they rely on the sea ice to perform great hunting skills. Uh, so ring seals, their main prey, actually keep breathing holes throughout the winter. So they maintain um, quite a number of them, I think up to 15 breathing holes per seal. And they keep those open by using their claws to kind of scratch, scratch the ice away over time. And so one of the, the techniques that polar bears use to hunt and find their prey is to basically sneak up to the holes and wait for the seal to, seals to breathe and then they'll, they'll capture the seal that way. You have also might have seen polar bears in videos pouncing on snow. Um, often the ring seals will, when they have their, their babies on the ice, they'll be under a layer of snow, but not under the ice. So this might be a seal den where the polar bears are creeping up and trying to um, basically break through the top of the seal den to get at the, the baby or uh, other seal in that area. We have some questions about what they like to do for fun and what their favorite things in, to do with play are. Can you tell us a little bit about what they might do for fun and maybe some of the uh, fun enrichment that we use here at the zoo? Um, they are such goofballs. They love enrichment. They love playing with each other. Uh, so we can use different kinds of enrichment here. Anything from you know big plastic toys, uh, we can use different smells, scents, perfumes. Um, we've even blown bubbles for them that are scented, which is fun. 
uh, and all kinds of things like that. So one of their favorite things, and from what we've seen, we like to see that pounce behavior. One of the goals with enrichment is to sort of elicit natural behaviors from our bears and to give them some stimulation. So if you give them a big rain barrel per se, we will throw that out there for them and they often will crush it. So we have a lot of squished barrels in our repertoire of enrichment uh, and it's a lot of fun. So they, they like to pounce on those um, and it's amazing to see what they can do to a rain barrel because I certainly can't crush them that way and so for them it's basically like butter. But yeah, they love to do stuff like that. Um, we like to give them puzzle feeders too so you can hide treats inside of toys or uh, that kind of thing. Give them fluffy new beds. They really like to lay in straw. Obviously out in, you know, in the tundra they're going to just sleep on snow, but given the option, they certainly enjoy a fluffy bed. And we see a lot of play behavior between the bears too. That's a lot of fun too. Uh, we have a couple questions asking um, how long they live. So maybe let's in zoos and in the wild, what's their lifespan? Uh, at one point in Winnipeg, I believe uh, Debbie the polar bear, who used to live at the zoo, held the record for age. I think it, she was just shy of 42 when she passed away. I think since that she's been surpassed. I think it's 45 now is the record. Um, and CJ, did you want to talk a little bit about... Yeah, they say on average that bears in the wild will live uh, between 15 to 18 years. So you'll see that uh, polar bears in zoos usually live quite a bit longer than what they live in the wild. Okay, one more question. We have a few questions asking if our zookeepers ever go into the cages with the polar bears, pet the polar bears, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Can you talk a bit about our safety here with bears? Uh, we absolutely do not. Um, we take our safety very seriously here. There's always at least one sort of barrier, pun intended, uh, <laughs> between us and the bears. So we can work with them through hand feeding and things like that, but there's always going to be some sort of caging or mesh between us. So um, yeah, we don't go in there. <laughs> okay, I have one more curveball question for both of you guys. Which bear is your favorite bear or what's your favorite thing about bears here if you cannot answer that question? Um, I cannot answer which is my favorite bear, especially <laughs> not while they're looking at me. Um, <laughs> honestly, oh, there's so many things. Look at this goof right here. That's one of my favorite things, just being absolute goofballs. They're so smart. I love working with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis to train them and to just see that curiosity and excitement and and learn their different personalities because we do see a lot of different personalities with them. So yeah, I honestly, I can't really narrow that down for you, but they're all amazing and you should all love them. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, favorite thing about polar bears? Oh, I think they just are so amazingly adapted for their extreme temperature that they're used to living in. So they're found in Arctic uh, environments. And so you'll see they have really tiny ears and tiny tails. So those are things to keep heat in their bodies, but then they have things like amazing smell where they can smell their uh, prey from very, very far away. So they're just like really amazing creatures, but they also kind of remind me of golden retrievers in some way. And I <laughs> grew up with golden retrievers, so I think maybe there's a soft spot in my heart for them. But yeah, I, don't, I also don't have a, a favorite bear here. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're kind of going to wrap up now. So we provided you just a little sample of what we do in research and conservation here at the zoo. And we got to see some spectacular uh, video of polar bears um, while the zoo is closed. So I hope you guys will join us on our next creature feature, which will be on Monday, where we're talking all about skunks. Thanks everyone for joining us. Bye.